Paul, do we remember how to do episodes when we're not in the car? Uh, it seems I mean, a little I'd daunting. See- and not only that, but every time we do uh, a broadcast where we have to use webcams, you're always wearing that ridiculous hat. <laughs> well, number one, it's 25 degrees in my house because I never. Because <laughs> you never pay the heat bill. I keep the I keep the house uh, uh, roughly around the same temperature your wife does. Yeah, why why pay the heat bill? We can just turn on your gas oven. <laughs> Put your head in it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what the last 20 years have felt like as a Bills fan. <laughs> Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. We're far enough along in the season that you start to notice patterns and trends going on with, with some of the teams especially some of the statistics. And we know there's a lot of stat hounds out in Buffalo that like to just try to say this, that, and the third and say, oh, this is why this is going to happen because of this. And, you know, as much as I love statistics, both you and I work with statistics for our daily jobs all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, It's fun to examine them and and look at them. And there were some statistics that, A, Bills fans should be leery of from people trying to troll you. Mm -hmm. And other statistics I think might surprise you in – and taking a deep dive, and, and just to let everyone know, um, a resource which is awesome just to look at if you guys are a fan of numbers is uh, Pro Football Reference. It's always great to look at the splits, see what's going on with the team, see what's going on, see what some of the patterns are. And it really gives you a real a deep dive in, in um, what's going on with the team. But you just can't take the numbers for, for in and of themselves in a vacuum. So just to be, be mindful of that. So uh, Paul and I are going to go back and forth with some statistics that may shock or troll <laughs> if you're if you're a Bills fan because you know what yeah. Bills as we know as we know Paul mm-hmm. how much have we hated the Patriots for winning all of those oh years? my god so when you start winning oh, the hate so starts then when you start winning yeah, the hate just starts. so much awful Paul won the coin toss he has deferred to the second pick. So I will go first. <laughs> I get second two, right? Is you this how it works two. in gym class? Yes, you get the next two statistics. I'm going to go with one statistic that I think is going to be very shocking for a lot of people. Um, as far as the defensive side of the ball goes, you know, everyone, we, we want to say, it always seems that Levi Wallace is getting targeted a lot because of Tredavious White on the other side. Obviously, mm-hmm. if you're a quarterback c- coming in to play the Bills, if you had to choose who you'd want to throw at, it would probably be Levi Wallace over um, mm-hmm. Tredavious White. The number one option would be Taron Johnson. Okay. Not, not knocking him, but that's, you know, the things are, but Paul, what if I told you that Tredavious white has been targeted 47 times this season and Levi Wallace has been targeted 50 times. That does. That just doesn't seem to make sense to me. Right. Nope. Like it only three more times. Like right. I just, I don't get it. You know, I, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, and we've seen Trey, uh, kind of line up like we've seen Trey in the slot, like when they were playing man and the, yeah. you know, they're playing the, you know, this is my guy man coverage uh, every once in a while. You'll see Trey move around the field, but for the most part, I, I would have said Levi Wallace has been targeted 10 more times easily. Yeah. You but know? It, it just Never seems like the, the receptions that Wallace mm-hmm. gives up. It seems like it's more daunting than what Trey does. You know what sure. I mean? If, if yeah. Trey gives up a, a reception, Okay, it was a third and fifteen, and he gave the guy a ten yard pass completion, and then pushed him mm-hmm. out of bounds. Like th- those are the things why you can't take the statistics, uh, right. you know, it just in and of themselves. But interestingly enough, as I mentioned his name before, Teron Johnson, sixty eight targets. He's been targeted mm-hmm. eighteen more times than Wallace, which yeah, it it doesn't surprise me because it's a slot wide receiver league, bud. That's right, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, it does speak to the fact that, you know, we've talked a lot about Teron Johnson uh, not being great in coverage. I mean, there you go. 
Like the proof's in the pudding. Like, and again, I know you can take these stats and you, I know you just mentioned you don't want to put them in a vacuum, but with all things being considered equal, better in coverage, Levi Wallace or Teron Johnson, it's not even questionable. You know, Levi Wallace is better in coverage. Now, man to zone coverage, you know, we could start having that conversation, yeah. but it's a lot easier to pick apart a zone corner than it is a CB2. Like it's just, it's a lot oh, it easier. Is. There's more space. It is. Right. And when you, you have more CB2, options. Yeah. Exactly. Right. The, the yeah, slot exactly. corner does not have the sideline to work with. Right. When, when they're trying to cover and it's and interestingly enough another thing uh, i just want to bring up really quick um while wallace and uh, and white are both giving up 14 yards per reception on those mm-hmm. johnson only giving up 10 so that's the you know one thing you want to look out for as far as the slot corner goes dane jackson giving up uh, 61 percent completion just one oh just up. stop it you just stop it <laughs> He's not even on the roster, Mario. <laughs> well, that's the lowest of all of those guys. So I'm just letting you know. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> and it's, you know, and, and we could get into a whole conversation of everything that needs to happen to get Dave Jackson on this roster. But that's a conversation for another day. All right. You ready? Yes. I, I get I get second two, right? You get second two. While I try okay. to dig out another statistic, I want you, you get okay. second two. All right. I want you to give me the top four players. In missed tackles on this defense. Top four top in four. miss. Give me top four. This is a this is a this episode is taking a turn. I just <laughs> give me the top four. Top four Who in missed tackles. Klein? Yep. Number one. <laughs> Number one. How did I get that? Yeah. a 17% missed tackle percentage. Ray Charles could see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with Stevie Wonder in center. <laughs> uh, I would go with AJ Klein. I would yep. go number two was Tremaine Edmonds. Yep, that's right. Okay, all right. So I'm two for two so far. Yep. Uh, number three, I would say is Jordan Poyer. Yep. No, that's number three. Oh wow! You're great. You're thousand. killing it. Um, I don't have anything in front of me, by the way. I'm not cheating. <laughs> uh, if I'd have guessed number four, I would guess Teron Johnson. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Those are top four. Uh, yes. 14, 12, 10, and 10. Actually, in order, believe it or not. Well, they're um, the top four tacklers on your team. Obviously, they're, they're, right. they're But what does that say right. about Klein being around the ball? Well, you know, it's fascinating, right? Because if you look at it, Klein's got five sacks on the year, and the others combined have four, right? Phenomenal. So, yeah. well, I mean, you – that's a stat. What? That's that could have been your second one. That's crazy. That's a crazy statistic. What the five sacks for AJ Klein and your top four missed tackles have four. <laughs> your top three missed tackles have four. Come on. No, no, I no. I'm just saying that he has five, and he's. I don't think he's leading the team in sacks. Yeah, when you came into the season, I didn't think yeah. you said, "Hey, AJ Klein's going to lead your team in sacks and have five by game 13." You know, right? You, there's other guys uh, in the NFL that mm-hmm. have ten on their own. Sure. For yeah. like losing teams. <laughs> sure. Sure. I, you know, but I think that the missed tackle percentage doesn't really surprise me because they've determined that AJ Klein is best moving forward. Right. Yes. So him, him being around the football. Well, yeah, he's going to be pressuring the quarterback and typically not. Uh, he's not going to be on the line. Right. So he's not going to get to the play as quick as somebody like Jerry Hughes, who has, you know, double the amount of quarterback pressures, which makes sense. You know, yeah, like, what? yes. Yeah, it does. But Agent Klein carrying a 17% missed tackle percentage. Um, it's not the highest on the team. But, I mean, if you're talking about guys with, with big snap percentages, that's Klein's that's up there. Yeah, yeah, that's up there. And I think that's kind of the one thing that a lot of Bills fans are going to get are going to catch smoke for. You know, Klein, while he is getting to the quarterback, um, you know, he is a there's a lot of tackles in the hole that AJ Klein seems to not make, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, 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 th- and that's kind of, unfortunately it, it kind of rains on the parade of what would be, you know, a, a fun surprise on defense. Yeah. Um, it's the, the ta- missed tackle percentage is just too high. It's, it, as I said, it's not the highest on the team, but it it's up there. Well, it's, I understand that, but I, I think that bills fans and anybody in general should look at the flip side of that. And the fact that this guy who was signed and brought in, realistically could we say the replacement for Lorenzo Alexander that veteran linebacker yeah. presence that you yeah. have over there yep he's you could take the flip side of it and say look how much he's around the ball 
Look how many right. times he's around, yeah. you know, trying to make tech, make plays, but he's he's at least in position to make all those types of plays. And, and I understand that. And they're, they're using him all over the field. They're doing a bunch of different things with him. Um, but Mark, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, bro. Like and, that's and close dan- and, and, and slow dancing. <laughs> What is this, 1954? Shut up. Leave room for the Holy Ghost. (laughs) Where's the balloons? Yeah. (laughs) Uh, That's a phenomenal statistic, though. But you expect your linebackers all to have the missing tackle. Like, you expect your wide receivers to be the leaders in drops on your team. Mm -hmm. You know, you expect it. Which brings me to my... Oh. Silky segue. (laughs) Wait, you didn't go twice yet, did you? Uh, Well, I mean, it was kind of the the sacks to the missed tackles. Sacks to the missed tackles, okay. Um... I almost sound like the 30 for 30 guy. What if I told you that? <laughs> that was um, Elliot Eisler on the hashtag 30 for 30, by the way. That was Elliot. Thank I'm going to have to enlist his services once, once when I do mine. Um, what if I told you that Stefan Diggs has more than twice the number of drops than any other receiver on the Buffalo Bills right now? Is it? Well, first off, volume says that that is possible but is it bad that i don't think i could actually name a single one of them i can like, i could tell you i could tell you every one of dawson knox's drops cannot tell you a single one of stefan diggs can i tell not you not a one andre roberts has been targeted three times this year i could tell you his drops because <laughs> the one <laughs> the one turned into a pick the one that he dropped um yeah, but and for those of you that just completely lost your mind, paused the video and then commented about the Knox drops, let me just finally drop the knowledge on you guys. Stefan Diggs has been targeted 134 times this year, and he's been credited with eight drops. Dawson Knox has 28 targets and has three. 28 and has three Look, drops. Dawson Knox has a, a 10% drop percent. He has a 10%. So every oh. 10 passes you throw him, he's going to drop one of them. Which, I mean, I would... The, the interception didn't count as a drop. No, it, it that, didn't. Is that, is that not a drop? That's an interception. It was a fumble. It wasn't yeah. a pick. It wasn't a pick. He had, Did Allen end up with two picks last night? It, uh, was that, that was called a fumble? He, he never had possession. Oh, I thought he made a football move. No. Uh, I don't think so. Let's uh, he, take he, a look. He made we? some kind of move. I don't know about let's, that. Let's um, take a look here. But you look at it. I mean, you look at the statistics for the wide receivers on the Buffalo Bills. Um, it yards, was called a fumble. Sorry, was, Mark. Yep. yep, it was called a fumble. Okay. Um, and another interesting stat that just kind of goes along with that. I just wanted to bring that up to be you know be funny. Yards before catch per reception. Okay, we talk about John Brown being your deep threat, correct? Mm-hmm. Yards before yeah. catch, John Brown is seven point three. You know who has the leading yards before catch in the, on the Buffalo Bills right now? Gabe what, Davis, twelve point four for Gabe Davis. Yeah, yep. We said that, and it was brought up at, on the post game. Is Gabe Davis your replacement for John Brown? And I'm sitting there going, well, he, I don't think he stretches the field like John Brown, but maybe he just stretches it in a different way. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean. Davis is definitely more physical at at the point of catch Absolutely. than John Brown, right? Yeah. But he has to be. Like, yeah, that's hey, his, you, what's his wheelhouse? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's you have to be. Like, it's John Brown's a pretty shifty guy, um, yeah. and I don't think anybody was expecting uh, this level of player when the Bills signed him. You know, when the Bills signed John Brown, I was like, all right, well, I don't love him. They wanted him the year before. He went to Baltimore. That didn't go well. He wasn't phenomenal in Arizona. Like, all right, so I'm not expecting much <laughs> here, right? And, um, I mean, it's he's a real heady player. But you're right. I, th- I think the style of receiver is different. But that doesn't mean that they can't accomplish the same goal. They just have to do it in a exactly. different way. Exactly. I just thought it was I just thought it was fascinating when I finally took a look at some of the numbers and looking at what Gabe Davis does. I mean, obviously, he's going to get more snaps the more John Brown is out. And he seems like he's progressing nicely into the offense. And, you know, for a guy who, I mean, all you had to do is take one look at his college highlight reel to know that uh, he uses his hands for every single catch. This guy does not let anything get into his body. And that's something that a developing quarterback, which at the time we were talking about Josh Allen, when he, if could he take the leap in year three, I think he's answered a lot of those critics. You're talking about talking about, well, what if Allen isn't accurate on certain throws? Does he have a wide receiver that could make up for that? And I think we've saw we've seen some acrobatic catches from Gabe Davis that have bailed 
uh, a few drives out for the Buffalo sure. Bills. So, yeah. like you said, he's not the little shifty guy that's probably going to get in and out of cuts like John Brown would, but he's going to – it's it's either his ball or nobody's, right. which that's, like a, yeah. that's a wonderful blanket to have when you're throwing to a wide receiver. Here at – I what's the best way for me to approach this topic? There are many times where I think we feel like a Brian Dable offense is a little predictable, right? You look at the set, you look at the personnel and you can, I mean, Mar, I don't know when you're watching the game, when I'm watching the game, I can kind of tell when they're running the football, right? Like it's, it's pretty predictable. Um, I mean, I think so. Right. Um, so the stats tell me that the Bills, uh, now, mind you, right, first down, on first down, the Bills will run on first down more this entire season than they will on second, third, and fourth down combined, right? That's the way the stat's trending right now. Ooh. So on first down, the Bills have 161 rushing attempts. On second down, they have 122. Pretty close. On yes. third down, they have 45. What? Now, that's a pretty stark difference, right? <laughs> yeah, now, I would say yeah. so. Now, mind you, they do have half the number of st- uh, half the number of snaps, right, from second to third down, right? They've had just about half as many third downs as they've had second downs. Okay. But I don't I don't I know it's been a while since I've been in school. But half of 122 is not 45. <laughs> Just gonna throw that out there. I knew you were gonna um, do this. Yeah, and uh, of those, it, it's it's weird, right? Because of those 45 rushing attempts, right? Yeah. 26 of them has been first downs. Now, my next question to you is, how many of them have been by running backs? Oh God. Right now, that's where the stack gets weird, right? Yes, that's where the stack gets weird. So, how many of them do you think have been by running back? What's the total number that I'm looking at here? Uh, you're looking at uh, let's see here, let me go back. Uh, we are looking at there's been 45 rushing attempts on third down. How many of them have been by a running back? 35 rushing attempts on third Four, down. 40, 45, 45 rushing. I'm sorry. 45. 45 rushing attempts on third down. How many have been by running backs? I would venture to say 20. You'd be pretty close to right. Well, I mean, you'd be pretty close to right. Now, this is where stat, you know, we go again. Stats don't always tell the story. If we took it right. in a vacuum, how many of those were probably pat, pass play calls where protection broke down or coverage and Allen had to run? Right, or it's third and forever, yes. and you just hand you it off in the middle. Exactly, yeah. right? Like okay. the Bills did that yesterday. Yeah. Like we saw we yeah. saw the Bills do – sorry, the, we saw the Bills do that Sunday, uh, yesterday. You guys are – you're not seeing this Monday. <laughs> no, nobody uh, ever is going to see this. Yeah. <laughs> The fact still remains that, you know, when we talk about the Bills being predictable on third down, nobody's touching that football but Josh Allen, right? Like if if it's oh. a running play, like that's if if anybody's going to run the football on third down, it's it's quite often Josh Allen. Paul, the that's Bills the have scored forty touchdowns this year. Allen has had a hand in thirty five of them. Right. Yeah. Yep. It's a big yep. deal. Yeah. That's a huge deal. Yeah. yeah. It's a huge deal. Yeah. But you talk about holes in the Bills' offense. I mean, that everything goes through one player, right? And yeah, anytime yeah. you have everything go through one player, it could fall apart. You know, like the first half of that Steelers game was terrifying until Stephon Diggs just took over the football game, um, you know, and it put the team <laughs> on his back. He's like, I'm done with this, guys. Yeah, I got this. Right. But that's that's scary football. <clears throat> but again, from a predictability standpoint, I mean, that's definitely something I could see people ragging on the bills for not being, you know, effective on the ground. Well, yeah, on third down, you're absolutely right. It's a one man wrecking crew on third down. And if Allen were to go lame in third down, what would this bill's offense look like? I mean, talking about one of the best third down offenses in the league, but yes, big, but there, right. It's, it's all Josh Allen, hundred percent of it. Oh, hundred ten. Yeah. And he 100%. is the straw that serves the drink. And in order for yeah. any quarterback or any player to be the MVP of the league, they have to be the MVP of their team first. Sure. That's a huge yep. one. I have a statistic that may may or may not be its own episode. Oh, 
Uh oh. So, do you want to end it right now? I'm, I'm talking about the third quarter. Yeah. Anything that says third quarter is a hundred percent its own episode. <laughs> <laughs>